Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up Polaris on our server. And Polaris is going to allow us to stream our entire music collection to our phone, other computers, laptops, other devices in the household. Before we get into setting up Polaris, let's take a look at some of the other options. Again, a great reference for this is the awesome self-hosted list. Now, there are a plethora of options here, as you can see. I'm just going to point out a few of the more popular ones. The first one I'll point out is AirSonic, and this is the one that I actually use personally. You can see what it looks like here. It's filled with my music collection, and AirSonic is great. It is a little more complex. We have Funk Whale. This one is good if you're after a more social aspect to your music and you want to get recommendations from other users. The next one here I would point out is Gonic. Gonic is really good. Subsonic backend, so if you don't need a whole user front end for it, you're fine with the clients that are out there like Ultrasonic or AirSonic Refix, which looks like this. And another very popular one I'd point out down here is Navidrome. And Navidrome is a pretty simplistic web player, sort of like Polaris, although it does also support subsonic API. So you can use other clients with it as well. But I'm going to be showing Polaris here today because not only is it extremely simple, but I prefer its UI over Navidrome. But those are a few of the other more popular options available. So let's dive in next and get Polaris set up. Here we have the official Polaris GitHub page. And there is a demo here if you want to try it out before you install it. And then we'll scroll down to where it says getting started here. And then as with many of our other services, we're going to be spinning this up in a Docker container. So we'll go down here and click on this link. Now, in the documentation here, it gives us a Docker run command, and we could definitely use this. However, with our other services, we've been mainly setting them up with Docker Compose files, just so it's easier for us to organize everything, and it just makes it easier on ourselves. So we're going to log into the server and get this config set up. Remember, we're storing all of our Docker Compose files and organized folders under this directory. You can see some of the other containers we have spun up. And we're going to create another directory just for Polaris here. And we'll CD into it and create our Compose file with our favorite text editor. Now, we're just going to be using the Docker run command to help us build this compose file over here. The first thing we'll do is just set version. And then we have to give it the image. And we'll pull that from right here on the docker run command and paste it in. And then let's give it a container name. We'll just call it Polaris. And then the next thing we're going to do is set our volume bind mounts. And the first thing you want to give it is your music directory, wherever you store your music on your server. So in this self-hosting environment, we're putting our music in shared media music. And I put some dummy files in there so we'll be able to know when it scans the library, if it's working or not. And then that's getting mounted inside the container at slash music. Now, we could really put this wherever we want inside the container, just so we remember when we reference it inside the application. And if you have multiple music locations, you can add them and mount them inside the container wherever you want. The next bind mount that I can see here is for a cache folder. So we're going to put that in this directory next to the compose file in cache and then set it to that. And then the data folder. We'll set that to data. Just like that. Next thing we'll do is set ports. And it wants to use 5050. That's fine. We can use that same port externally. And it's always a good idea to set a restart policy. I like to use unless stop. I also like network mode bridge. That's just a personal preference. Up here, however, I guess one thing I would change is set this to read only. 
and that way Polaris won't be able to actually make any changes to our music files. It doesn't really need to, it only needs read access to them. Now this should do it, so I'm gonna control S, control Q, Hover one note down here, we can see it telling us that this cache and data directory need to be owned by UID GID of 100. So we're going to create those directories right now. And then we're going to change the ownership of them. And we'll have to sudo that last command. And now we should be able to spin up Polaris. So let's sudo docker compose up dash D. And let's see if it's working. We'll open up a new tab in our browser and type that in. And here we're greeted with our Polaris welcome message. So it looks like it's working. We'll click on this. And now we have to give it the location of our music. Now remember the container is going to see this side over here. We're passing this in and it's getting mounted inside the container in this location. So when the application is asking for a location, we need to give it this slash music. And then we can name it whatever we want. So we could name it default library or whatever you would see fit there. But we'll click next and then we need to create a username and password for ourselves. Now, under here we have default library. If we click into it, we can see it is reading from that location. This is the album that I put in there just to make sure that we could test it out. And sure enough, all the tracks are showing up in here. Now on your phone, you could install Polaris and have the same access to this or just use the web version of it as well. All right, let's take a look at what else we can do in Polaris. Let's jump down to the settings next and change this theme because I'm being blinded by all this white light. We're gonna change this to dark mode. You can see there's a brown and a blue. Kind of like the blue, we'll leave it at that. And you can also change the highlight color here. Over on the collection tab, we have an album art pattern that it will look for to display the album art. We have our music sources. If we wanted to add more, we could easily do it from within here. Then we have our scan collection. Every 30 minutes, it's gonna rescan for new files or we can manually scan it. We have an ability to add and delete users. So if we wanna create a new user, that way they have access to it and they can create their own playlist for themselves. We can do that right here. And it also has a DDNS built into it. I would recommend not using this. If you're gonna use DDNS, there are plenty of better ways to do it. But let's take a look, see what else we have. So here, you know, we have our default media library. We have a random, which we only have one album in here, so it's not gonna show us much, but here we could get a random view of our music. Recently added. Playlists, so we can create playlists. And we have a search. And here you can see how easy it would be to add or create a playlist. Put all your music over here in this playlist and then click save and name your playlist. Now over in the playlist section, we have access to this playlist. So it's very simple, easy to use audio streamer that's gonna give you access to all your music. Like I said, this is very clean, very elegant, very simple. If you need more features than this, there are plenty of other options out there. I think AirSonic is one of the best. However, it is also a lot more complex and it doesn't look quite as nice as this. This is a beautiful user interface. I really love and appreciate how clean this looks. Well, that'll do it. For this video, thank you for watching and you have a nice day. Here I'm just going to add Polaris to our dashboard and also to our monitoring system. In the interactive editor and add a new section, we'll call this media. And then we'll add Polaris to it. Now there is not a home lab icon, so we'll have to manually download an icon and use it. But we're going to skip this section for now and just type in the service URL.
and we'll save it and check that it works. Indeed it does. But let's add an icon to it. So I'm basically finding an icon that's going to be suitable. I found it from the official GitHub page and I'm downloading that icon here. However, it's in .ico file format and it wasn't reading in Dashi as that, so I converted it over to a PNG file. Then here I'm just rsyncing it over to the server in the correct location that Dashi reads its icon files from. And that's basically it. That's how you manually add icon files to Dashi. All right, now that we have the Polaris icon added, the next thing we want to do is add Polaris to our monitoring system. I'm going to SSH back into the server. And then under our home directory here, in our scripts directory, we have Docker Health. Let's open that. And we're just going to add Polaris to the end of this list. Control S, Control Q. And we'll jump over to Health Checks and add it here. And as always, we're going to run our script, make sure it's working. And you can see we got a green check mark, fresh ping, so that is working. And Polaris also got added to our widget here as well. So again, thank you for watching, and you have a nice day.